Hello. Good morning. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Let me, uh... Yeah. Wow. Yep. Great start. Yeah. This is not. <laughs> this is not Pep Cack Mondays, Alexandra. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I don't know. After the week that, after how crazy this week has been, it might be Pep Cack Friday. Yeah. Well, it feels like Pep Cack Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. <laughs> it's just Groundhog Day every day this week. Yeah. I was struggling yesterday with Rob to get boundaries scheduled on Nomad and have everything happily working together. It took us four hours and in the end we still get, didn't get everything working, so. Yeah. <laughs> did, like, did you have a lo- too lofty of a goal for yesterday or did you just run into well, setup issues? No, we didn't really have a goal per se. Um, Sounds right. I, I think... Well, it sounds like today, you mean. Yeah. Um, Oh, hold on. Before I forget, let me turn down the music a little bit. Right. Um, So we had the goal of running Boundary on top of Nomad. And Mm -hmm. well, first Rob had to explain to me the architecture of Boundary. And then we needed to look at like, okay, so how does Nomad work? Um, Yeah, I I thought at the beginning of the stream, it was kind of neat how Right, it was like the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing because yeah. you both were you both were teaching and learning at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, and we were just struggling with high fives, which also took up time and things I like know. that. So, do you want to try it? Wait, I'm gonna go this way. Yeah. Boom. See, <laughs> already went better than with Rob. Yeah, I don't know how you struggled with that one. I know. <laughs> but yeah, so. Timer. We we struggled through it, but then in the end, we basically figured out like, okay, we because it's all distributed components, we need service discovery in there. So for the next stream, I'm going to add console in there so we don't have to worry about all the net- networking anymore. And that'll greatly simplify everything. Um, so the next one will actually go really quick. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. When are, when are you and Rob streaming again? Uh, we don't know yet because Rob is uh, is planning to take a few days off, but I'm yeah, I'm hoping next week somewhere. Okay. So, but speaking of uh, streaming, what are we doing today, Alexandra? So we've got a couple of things to do. Uh, we had somewhat lofty goals last week. Um, I was looking at what I we're going to do. I think we we reached all the goals, kind of like the infinite loop was not part of the goal. Um, <laughs> it's always fun though to add something like that in. Yes. Uh, but no, we are going to do some work with Terraform Cloud and Google Cloud and be working on Cloud Run and Cloud SQL is what I've been told. Yes. Yes. So, so can what we are, check all those boxes? Today? What are those things? What are those things? Well, I know Cloud Run and Cloud SQL are Google technologies. We actually used Cloud Run last week. Do you remember? Um, kind of. It's been a long week. (laughs) All right. Do you maybe want to recap what we did last time? This is what I wanted to go over writing the description for last week before we had this stream today. Oh, I thought it was just to send out a tweet, (laughs) but it was more a recap for you. So you didn't Mm -hmm. have to watch the episode. (laughs) Yeah. Fine. So do you want me to go through it then? I do. (laughs) All right. So we started off with, we had a bucket and we had images in there. Um, I think we made a very simple website, right? We, we did that last time. I think we didn't get very far with that though. No, no, but we, we made a little website thingy Mm -hmm. so you could see the pictures, but then I told you like there's going to be a problem and once we actually showed the the website the pictures were huge right Mm -hmm. so what we wanted to do is when you upload an image to um, a google cloud bucket you can have it send out a notification right and that notification can then be put on pubsub do you remember that one i do publish subscription Yes. So 
then when it's on that message queue, it can then trigger something else. So that then triggered a Google Cloud Run application that I had built that turned out to have a bug that would infinitely loop. <laughs> um, but it would resize that image and then re-upload it into the bucket. As a thumbnail. Yes, like as a smaller, it's, it wasn't really a thumbnail because it was still 800 pixels wide, but at least a manageable size compared to what it was before, right? Mm -hmm. So that's basically what we did. And then at the end of last week's stream, we found out that when it uploads the thumbnail, that then again triggers a resize which uploads a thumbnail, which triggers a resize, which uploads a thumbnail, which infinitely Round spinning. and around. Yes. Mm -hmm. So... Lots of pictures. We need to fix that. So that's one of the things I want to do today. Um, but another thing that I would like to do is... Let's make a little website in Google Cloud Run. Right? Instead of having just a bucket with an HTML file, let, let's try and do that. Um, and maybe write some data to Cloud SQL. How's that sound? Uh, that sounds good. Sounds like we've got a lot of work to do. I, it sounds like you already started. You're already typing. Oh, I was <laughs> taking notes. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, do you want to fire up your computer and we'll start with maybe the first steps? Sure. All right. Luckily, my computer's already fired up. I'm just going to share my screen and actually open the, <laughs> the systems we're using. Cool. We'd have a big problem if my computer wasn't already fired up. Here, we have big Alexandra. Oh, well, we have two of me. Boom. Boom. <laughs> I should hurry up and share my screen. There we go. That's better. Yep. Oh, but now we don't have Alexander anymore. Maybe. Just maybe I can bring Alexander back. Hold on. Let's see if this works. Now we have small Alexan Alexander next to me. Oh, there's the two of us. Yeah, because there's no code for me to block. No. Well... Maybe later. We'll, we'll we'll figure that bit out. <laughs> Good morning, Kareem. Do we get more doggo pictures? Well, that depends on Alexandra. I hope so. Last time we had Frank, Solo, and Pixel. I think. Do do we add all of them? I believe we did. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. Of... I'm not sure we uploaded Pixel. I don't remember. Let's can we go check? Yeah. All right. Waiting on you <laughs> to show us. Where am I going? So do you remember how we created those images in the bucket? Um No. All right. So we did it through Terraform. Well, yes, but I can't find the pictures in Terraform. But we have an image.tf file. Do you remember that one? Yeah, it's right there. So I see um, a Google storage bucket object called Solo. So that that's one of them. And then so if, we, I... yep. if we scroll up, I see Nori. Got Nori and Frank. But I don't have access to the Google storage bucket. No, that's true. But you can see here, because Terraform is declarative, what you declare is what gets created, right? Mm -hmm. So this, what you have in your code, is actually what is living in that bucket now. So, okay, so, so there, there is, is no pixel, pixel object. Yep. So yep, there's just Frank, Solo, and Nori. Yeah. I don't know if I downloaded an image. I think you did look in assets. Because that's where it's reading them from. Oh, 
Yeah, I have one. Oh, I have that one. Oh, there they are. Look at that. Oh, there you go. Doggo picture. Another one. Oh, yeah, that one is solo. That's, That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. So cute. He didn't look too happy. No, oops. Yeah, solo oh. Solo is uh, very, opin very opinionated. Yeah, exactly. She's a, an Australian cattle dog, so she has a lot to say. <laughs> does she, she howl? She does not howl. She okay. actually has like this crazy little squeak. She has a very high pitched bark and so does Frank, who we think Frank has some Australian cattle dog in him too. And both of their barks are like shrill. They're so loud and- Is it the Australian accent? It must be. There must be the canine Australian accent. <laughs> No, yeah, right, the doggos so are highly available, Kareem. Um, they are they are safe as well. Google replicated them all over the web. <laughs> no worries <laughs> there. They were actually already replicated because I think you downloaded it from Google Photos. I did. Yeah, so, but they actually they actually already live in Google Cloud. <laughs> yeah, they are they are super highly available. Yes. Okay, so. Um, maybe we should do a small refresher then through the code, since you seem a bit lost again. Yeah, you know, it's, I am finding that I think I need to carve out time throughout the week to like come back, because going like a week in between talking about this stuff. Yeah. It definitely, unless I like rewatch the episode right beforehand, it's it's hard to recall everything that we did. Okay. Right? And like the actions. So, would it help if I make a little diagram with all the components and how they live together? I would love that. All right, shall we uh, try and do that YOLO live? Just, you know, how we usually do things. Yeah, that would be great. Are you going to share your screen? Or are you yeah, gonna, no, I, are you I will, pull, I will share my screen. a real whiteboard behind you. Uh, no, that's just... The green screen. I know, but I, I was hoping you also had a whiteboard that you were just going to like wheel in from the side. Oh, no. Well, you like know, I've been renovating, right? Yeah. And one of the reasons why my office sounds so echoey is because it's literally empty. I have one framed poster and a printer. Yes. That's all my decoration. It's on the back wall, right behind you. Yeah. Well, it's not hanging or anything. It's just standing on the floor. It's leaning against the back wall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are you, go ahead. I was going to say, is the, are you still situated so that the door is right behind you? Yes. Yeah, which was funny yesterday. Um, so we were live streaming and I had the green screen down. So I have a pull down green screen, right? Like from the ceiling. And my wife didn't realize I was still streaming. And then she opened the door and like bumped into. <laughs> into the green screen? Yeah. I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> I hope she wasn't like carrying tea or food or something and spilled it everywhere. No, 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 that, that would have been all right. It was just the, the bump and no goodies afterwards. So <laughs> yeah. So the, the green screen is pretty close to where the door. Yeah. It's like so five, it's five centimeters in front of it. So, okay. <laughs> all right. She had no chance. Poor Justina. Yeah. Um, so let me switch to this view and then I'll. All right, so you can see that, right? I can see a blank slide, yes. Yes, all right. So so we're just going to create text boxes with lines, and we'll figure it out like that. So we have um, Google Cloud. So that's the uh, really big, oh, the really big box we have over here. Oh, it doesn't like doing that. Well, fine. If you we'll, add space we'll do it spaces, with shapes. So we'll I'll just add shapes. Right. And then we need to send this to the back. There we go. Okay. So everything we're doing is running inside of GCP. Um, well, actually, not entirely true. Um, so let me create another little box because we're also actually using uh, Terraform Cloud, right? He waits for confirmation. Yes, this is correct. Okay. All right. 
So this is where our state lives, right? So here we have our Terraform state. And we have our Terraform workspace. All right, cool. I'll, I'm not even gonna bother making that <laughs> clean up. All right, so there's a few services we are using. Um, let me create another box in here. And then we're gonna create another box here for today. So we were using Google. I'm, d I'm gonna omit all the Google cause it'll be Google something, Google something, Google something, right? Basically everything in these boxes has the word Google in front of it. <laughs> and it sounds like our cloud run last week. Yes. So we have cloud storage and we have cloud run. Those are the things we are currently uh, using. So inside of cloud storage, we have our bucket, right? So this is our bucket. Let me just copy paste. Okay. And in that bucket, so our, our bucket was called Freeman Dogs, right? Yes. And then in here we have um, solo.jpg, Nori, JPEG, Frank, JPEG, etc. All right, so this is where our files live. And I'm gonna need to make this bigger, right? Um, oh, and actually, I'll, I'll call this pub sub for now, pub sub. So basically what happens is, and let's bring out the arrows. So when we do a git commit, it triggers um, a webhook on GitHub that triggers Terraform Cloud. Um, so Terraform Cloud then talks to Google Cloud. So we created our bucket, right? Um, then after that, we start uploading those images, right? So we upload those. I'll remove that one because that was just the initial time. Now, every time when we upload an image, it sends a notification to... So notification... It sends a notification to PubSub telling it like, hey, this file got uploaded. Um, it's called this, it's that type of file, etc." cetera. Um, that then triggers an event in Google Cloud Run. Now inside of Google Cloud Run, I had my little infinite loop application, right? So we have the app like world's ugliest circle. There we go. <laughs> okay. So so Cloud Run yes. triggers the app to run. So the app is running inside of Cloud Run. Cloud. Right. So you have to either create an app that lives on Cloud Run? Lives yeah, in so Cloud Run? Basically, we created a Docker container mm -hmm. and we deployed that Docker container to Google Cloud Run. Okay. So it's, it's always running there waiting for an incoming request, right? Um, and that request actually gets sent by pops up. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. It does make sense. So Cloud Run though, only comes into the picture if you've created an app, right? That is triggered by that notification or Google, the app lives inside Cloud Run. Cloud Run is triggered by the notification. Is there like other ways to, does Cloud Run only like manage those apps if you add like an app to it? Or is it like something that you can add 
rules around or other configurations to say like Google Cloud Run do X. No, so when... Google Cloud Run runs application. Um, but instead of you having to spin up um, a Kubernetes cluster or something like that, you only have to pass it a container and you can trigger your application in multiple ways, which is kind of cool, like have it respond to it and it scales it up and down automatically. So that's basically that triggering bit, right? So when a request comes in, it, it then spins up an instance, handles the request, and then if it's done, it'll spin down again. So it's similar to Nomad? Um, well, Nomad is more similar to Kubernetes where it'll keep your application running all the time. Okay. That's, like, do you see that differentiation? So Nomad and Kubernetes keep the application running at all times, whereas Cloud Run is like a point in time. So Cloud Run will automatically scale your application up and down depending on incoming requests. Okay. So if there's no traffic, it's scaled to zero. If there is traffic, it'll scale to one, or if there's a lot of traffic, it'll scale up even more to handle how much ever traffic or how much it needs to scale up to handle all that traffic. Does that make sense? That does make sense. But okay. is that yes. is that functionality part of what Kubernetes and Nomad also do? Right? It's not all of what they do, but is that... So you could... So <laughs> Cloud Run is actually K-native, which is something running on top of Kubernetes. Okay. Um, and it's basically using an autoscaler. So you could do something similar with the autoscaler in Nomad. Okay, yep. Kind of, but just out of the box, Kubernetes and Nomad do not do this. Like with those schedulers, you basically tell it, hey, run this application for me. I want X instances of that application running at all time. And if there's no request, you still have X applications running. But with Cloud Run, if there's no traffic, it'll scale it all the way down to zero, meaning you're not paying for it. Mm -hmm. And then when you get traffic again, it's it scales up. Okay. That was the other thing we wanted to check last week, right? <laughs> Were we going to get charged for all those pictures that got uploaded? Oh yeah. No, that's fine. The oh, the well. the good thing about storage is it's really cheap. Yeah, it has to be. So, but anyway, so we have this application running here, right? Let me um, let's see. Can I change the color? Uh, let me make it green, then we'll make our bucket blue, right? So those are the things we actually made. Um, what the application then does is it resizes the image and then it actually uploads a new image into thumbnail slash and then solo jpeg etc right yes sorry i was on mute i was i was responding to you but i was on mute okay <laughs> so that's basically the loop we did last time does that make a little bit more sense seeing it yes can you save this and send it to me yeah i'll i'll, I'll make a prettier one um i'm gonna print it on canvas and put it on my wall. All right, <laughs> fine. <laughs> um, Just kid kidding, I'm not gonna do that. Oh, all right, kind of disappointing. Um, <laughs> right, so this app was called Resize. Um, today, I actually want to create another application for our website, right? I'll just call it web, because I don't want to make that circle any bigger. It'll make it uglier. 
Um, and then what I want to do is um, use, let me just copy paste. So cloud SQL, which is like a hosted database in Google Cloud. And then basically I want the website to read um, data, which I guess will be things like, um, well, we'll probably have like an images table and that then has like uh, image name and then the URL or something, right? So we can right. keep keep track a little bit of what we have, etc. And the URL will refer to something in the, the bucket. Okay. So we'll see how far we can get. Um, I'm thinking let's first create the database and maybe make a table, something like that. How does that sound? Cool. Sounds like we're going to be using Terraform as Terraform is meant to be used. Yeah, for change. <laughs> creating a database let's do it all right i'll be my first database so let me throw it back to you oh good oops <laughs> got my screenshot of you and rob from yesterday when you were trying to high five each other <laughs> oh yeah there were um a few of those. Rob and I actually went live um, before we knew it, and we were doing the high five, and Rob was doing a little, little dance. Oh, you did. You were live without yeah. knowing it. Yeah, we uh, we we to... failed again as usual. That's a good way to start. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's clean this up slightly first. Right, let's um, create a new file in assets called index.htm. And Not let's HTML because you like to use three letters at the end. Yeah, except when it's Terraform, because then it's yep. only two. TF. Yep. Um, so, and let's copy the HTML code that we had in the website.tf and move that out of there just to clean this up a little bit. Whoa, whoa, not that's a bit too en enthusiastic. Oh, what? I only Sorry. want the HTML code out of there. Oh. <laughs> line four to 16? Um, no, line three to 16. Well, it's four to 15. We can get rid of the EOFs. Okay. Yep. Now you also see that it actually gets um, highlighted because it, it detects it's an HTML file and then it can actually show, oh, this is a tag, this is an attribute, etc. Um, so it's easier to work in the code like this. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, save that one. And then we need to change website.tf. So instead of having data, we want it, or sorry, content, we want to use, I believe it's called source. So if you look at uh, how we did the images. Oh, like the, the guide? No, go to image.tf. Oh. And if you look there, we have source equals assets. So it's basically pointing at a file instead of us writing the content and creating the file that way. Mm -hmm. So we want to do the same as we do there for the website. So are we copy pasting some of this? No, we're just going to change one thing. Okay. So right now we have content and then we have the actual contents there, but we want to use the source field. No, up. Um, so on line three, we need to remove line three to 16. Okay. And then we need to make that source equals and then the path to the file. The path to on the the local the one we just made this index yes so it would be this index HTM no it will be assets slash 
Don't index me. htm. <laughs> nice try though. Uh, in, in quotes. <laughs> ah yes. Yeah, it needs to be in quotes because it's a, a value and it's a string. So if something is a string value, you always need to quote it. If it's a number, you can just write the number itself. Okay. I feel like I need to um, go through some of the Terraform, like learn tutorials. Don't they have like small quizzes at the end of them? I need to like test I my I knowledge. I don't know. <laughs> because obviously I'm not retaining everything, so. No, so is there a way you more? think we can, and cause this might be the same for people watching. Like if anybody has watched an earlier one, um, like, is there a nice way that we could somehow quiz you at the start of each of our episodes to just like verify, like, hey, did we still retain all that knowledge? And like, where are we having gaps, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different ways we could go about that. Oh, I, I like the idea of uh, Lucifer, we could like for chat to check if everybody is still up to date. Mm -hmm. We could do Twitch polls where we can basically do multiple choice like checks of all right. So what is this? What is that? Things like that. I, I like that idea. We should definitely do that. I like that idea as well. Um, I've never used Twitch polls before, but we could figure that out. Yeah. And do that. Are you, are you making? Making notes? Um, well, I'm sharing my screen now. So oh, I'll, I'll notes. make a note. <laughs> I, I use one of these things. It's called a pen. Oh yeah? yeah. I haven't uh, seen one of those in years. Well, technically I was holding a pencil, so I was kind of lying. Now I'm holding a pen. Even more old school pencil. Well, it's like one of those, um, what do you call it? You, you click it and then you Get. A mechanic, oh. a mechanical pencil. Yeah. Click, 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 click. They are awesome. I used to, I used to love those. Oh, yeah, man. yeah. Rotring. If you ever want to sponsor me, you know where to find oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> um. So Twitch polls. I love that. I Twitch polls to check retention. Cool. You know what we should do sometime? We should do a big Terraform quiz through polls and then do a nice giveaway or something. I would agree. I know the person who uh, manages the giveaways. Yeah, I think I do too. Yeah. <laughs> I'll stamp that with my approval. <laughs> cool. If it, help, if it helps me learn and other people learn, let's do it. Yeah. Um. So... Okay, that this was just to clean up the website.tf, so the code is not in there, right? Because if we're gonna um, add more to the the website, the file will just grow, 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 grow. Um, it will become unusable. So don't forget to save. Got it. Cool. All right. So let's create a new Terraform file. Um, let's call it I don't know database or SQL, whatever you want. And in the meantime, I'm gonna link you to database.tf documentation. Um, yeah, that that is correct. All right. So I'll link you to the first thing we're gonna need, and I'm gonna link everything in Twitch chat just because that's easier. Um, okay. It's the one thing you don't have open, is it? It's, uh, yeah, but <laughs> let me... Let me actually open it. Just... We're off to a great start today. Well, I probably can't pause us because then I don't think I'll continue with the documentation, but... All right, we are there now. Yep. Okay, so... We're going to need a few things. Now, if, if you can scroll down on the left side, 
Mm -hmm. um, and you might want to zoom it in slightly. Make it a little bigger? Yeah. Uh, I think that's fine. I hope. L looking at the chat, if anybody needs a bit bigger, then... Do one more just to be safe. Boop. Yeah, okay. that's always good. All right, so if we scroll down and we go to Cloud SQL, there's a few resources we're going to need. So first of all, we're going to need a database instance, um, which is basically the actual database server that we will be connecting to, right? And then inside of that database instance, we can have multiple databases. Okay, so in our case, we only need one database. Um, but let's say for, for future projects or whatever, we could have multiple databases inside of that instance. And then uh, third of all, we're going to need a user to connect to that database. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Is user like login user? Yes. Yeah, because in order to connect to the database, you need to authenticate yourself. Um, so we're going to be creating um, an admin user, uh, which will just randomly generate. And then later we can add additional users for us to, to use. Okay. So I feel like, um, yeah. like I said, this is my first time building a database. This is very exciting. Uh, there's going to be a lot of quiz questions coming out of this one. <laughs> Probably, yeah. All right, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> so, um, and eventually, this would be a great thing to do with a uh, vault, right? Generating the database credentials dynamically instead of us creating one through Terraform. But you always need to create an like an initial database user to set okay. things up. So. You have to have at least one user. Yeah, because um, even Vault needs to be able to do things in the database. So you need to give Vault some credentials to do things as well, right? So sure. we're always going to need create one, because um, by default there there isn't a one. Right. Okay. Yeah, that makes so sense. So let's start off by creating an SQL instance. All right. So I'm just going to let you uh, take a look at, at the documentation. Okay. Do you remember um, how we used to create all the other resources? How we used to? Well, yeah, last week, <laughs> you know, back, back in the day. <laughs> back in my day. Um, well, so we have to use our terminal, right? And we have to create Oh, I, I meant more like basically how we normally started off was copy just... Copy pasting. <laughs> exactly. I'm trying to find my copy paste. It's for, further down. Okay. Um, right, we get yes. example usage. Here we go. Right yeah. There. So there's actually multiple flavors of databases we can use. Ooh. So you have like um, MySQL. Like post cherry, chocolate, vanilla. Yeah, so MySQL is kind of like vanilla, and then Postgres is kind of like chocolate. Okay, where does coffee fit in? Coffee's a really good flavor. There, uh, well, yeah. There are only two flavors. <laughs> yeah, well, there might be um, MS SQL as well, um, which let me actually uh, let me check for you, um, but I actually. Today we're going to be using Postgres. So while I try to figure out what other flavors there are, why don't you SQL? start off with the initial creation of a Postgres database? And we're just gonna do the absolute simplest version now. We'll, we'll think of security and all those things later. Since this is our development environment, we're not too, too worried right now. Never too worried. So I'm yeah. uh, I'm checking now. Let's see, view all features. 
Well, go on. Are you looking for another database to call coffee? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so there's basically just the, the three that I thought of. So there's MySQL, PostgreSQL, and Microsoft SQL. But okay. personally, I would not call Microsoft SQL coffee. I would okay. call it strawberry or something. So, uh, yeah, so that's, that's the cherry or the strawberry ice cream. Well, it's not the cherry. <laughs> it's not my favorite database. Okay. Yeah, I kind of got that from the strawberry ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Reference. So Lucifer is actually mentioning something interesting. He's he's mentioning no, no SQL. SQL. Have you heard of that? I have heard of it, but don't ask me to describe what it is. All right. You I it looks like oh, you're yes, holding a pen to make notes of for the quiz. <laughs> it's a it's a database. No, I actually I have like a little wrist thing oh, that I'm all right. like nervously playing with as we talk. <laughs> um I'm guessing it has it's a database with no SQL. Um well, that is correct. It's it's more schemaless um than SQL would be. Um so the data is stored differently. Um, depending on your flavor, it's either like a document store or it's a, like a column store. Um, so in, in the case of a Google SQL database instance, that is not one of the flavors we could choose. If you would like to do no SQL on Google Cloud, you would go with something like um, Bigtable or um, Google Data Store. Th those are more NoSQL type databases. Um, but in our case, we're just gonna do plain old SQL since it's nice and easy to query. So, but that was a good one for pointing out. All right, so in the meantime, you've copy pasted um, most of the things we need. Now, let's change a few things. Um, one of the things is, is more just um, making it our own, right? So let's change the label of the resource to be something more logical to us. Maybe we should call the, um, the label website or something. The resource label. Yes. You know what? I've got my little, my, my video is blocking some of this. Oh, zoom. Oh, zoom. Um, so here where it says master, we want to call this website. Um, yeah, in the future, do you see us reusing this instance for any other things? Maybe we should just call it database. Just simple. All right. Now for us, since we're fairly familiar with making mistakes and then having to fix them. Mm -hmm. um, there is a, well, I wouldn't call it an issue, but a little idiocracy with Cloud SQL instances that the name that you give one is basically, um, it's gonna stay there and cannot be used until I think 30 days later. Um, I, I think it's to do with them being able to restore your database in case you accidentally delete it or something like that. Um, but this does mean that if in our Terraform code, we would call it the database name, let's say master instance like here, mm -hmm. if we would do a Terraform destroy and then a create again, um, that name would be an issue. So that name would be an issue for me only or for others? No, for, for you. Okay. Right within this project. Okay. Um, so what I normally do is I um, append a random hash at the end of the database name or the instance name. And that way it's always unique when it gets recreated. How many random hashes are there? Infinitely, pretty much depending on uh, the, the size of your hash. Okay. So in order to do that, we're going to need cream says four. 
Doesn't sound very random to me. <laughs> oh, I think Kareem just wants to guess your, your hash. <laughs> so we're going to need the random provider to generate one for us. Oh, wow. Okay. Got it. Right. Um, and in our case, let's use this one. So I'm going to link us to the random provider. And then the resource we want to use is ID. Okay. So this is actually a thing. Got it. Yeah. It's actually a thing. <laughs> I thought you were just like running your keys over, running your finger over the keys. No, <laughs> that would be another option. But then the problem is when you do a destroy and you want to create it again, you have to again run your fingers across the keys. Exactly. So I, I'd much rather have Terraform do the randomness for me. Um, because that'll be a bit more, well, automated. <laughs> Sounds like a bit, a slightly more dependable. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> but yes. Okay. okay, so are we copying this whole example? No. So the only bit we need is we need a random ID resource, mm -hmm. right? So we can use that uh, bit. Oh, uh, just copy paste the, that whole resource and we, we can delete some of those things because in our case, no, that's two resources you're copying now. Oh. Okay, got it. So this guy. Yep. And am I adding it before the comment? No, it it needs to be outside of the resource since it's its own resource, right? Okay. So let's call this. Um, I don't know. Let's uh, maybe database ID, something like that. Here, right? Instead of server. Yeah. Or database uh, post fix is maybe nice. Post haste. What? I said post haste. Post fix is what I said, didn't it? Didn't I? Yeah. Yes. Oh. But it makes me think of the saying or the word post haste. I've it I've means, never heard means... of that saying. It means to do something really fast. Like you have to get going basically. Oh, quick snap. Like it reminds me of, you know, movies, um, like something someone would say like an Ichabod crane, right? Where it's like, oh, they gotta. No, not quick, the... fast, quick snap. What? Quick snap. Okay. Quick snap. Yeah. You have to do Sorry. it right now. Quick snap. Quick snap. I can't yeah. snap with these gloves on. <laughs> chop, chop. <laughs> okay. So um, in our case, we don't need um, the keeper because okay. we we just wanted to generate a new one whenever um, we do a destroy it and a recreate. Um, okay. We don't need to have it change with a certain value that we change. So we can just delete that block. So it's 15 to 18. Yeah, or 19 even, like we don't need the empty lines. Um, and since we're not going to be doing this that often, let's just do a byte length of four. Oh, because Kareem said so. Well, no, because Kareem said there were only four hashes, but this is the length of our hash. And the hash is just a, a random string, basically, mm -hmm. in our case. Okay. I now understand that. Cool. So, um, up top, let's change the name of our database instance then. And let's change it to database dash. And then we're going to use some interpolation so we can remove instance. And so what we want to do is we want to add a variable into this right now there's actually a really nice example on the left in the AWS instance so if you take a look there 
random and, ID server? Um, well, it's actually, if you make the browser slightly wider, the code block will grow to the right. There we go. I've got it. So as you can see, they have the tag name, which is also a string, um, but they're basically adding that random hash inside of that string as well, right? Now, do you remember from the last time that we were using references to fields and resources? Um, yes. Okay. So can you tell me what reference we are using there? What reference we are using here? Yes. Um, no, I cannot. Okay. So the nicest way of going through it is going backwards, right? Kind of like a, a URL. So basically it is the hex field of server, which is a random ID. Okay. Right. So if you then look up, right? There is the resource type of random ID and that unique instance one is called server and it's the hex field of that resource. Okay. Right? So we want to do the same, but for our database postfix random ID, right? Mm -hmm. So give it a, give it a shot. Give it a go. Where does, where does this hex come from? So hex is a generated field. Um, so that is a an attribute that the um, random ID generates. If you scroll down in this, yep, further down, further down. Right, so here in the read only fields, you see hex. So that's a generated representation of the random ID. Okay. The generated representation of the random ID. The generated representation of the random ID. Right. So, so would, would we, we can be using this? Yeah, we're we're going to use the hex as our random value. Okay. Because we can basically output it it'll generate a random value. And we can have it output it in different ways. So we can output it in a decimal uh, system or in hexadecimal or as an ID or as a URL, right? In our case, hex will be uh, fine. It'll be a random string basically for us. Okay. So let's do that for, for our random ID, right? So we want to use interpolation to make sure like okay so what does this dollar sign do so that's just what i was going to explain um so we do want to keep that dash so in their example for the tags they basically um have a space in their name but in our case in our id we want it to be database dash something random right like a e three five q or whatever Right? So what the dollar mustache braces does is um, it basically tells it like, hey, inside of here, I want um, you basically to interpolate this as code. So it's not just literally the string, but do some logic with this string, right? So it'll replace whatever is between those braces with whatever is computed inside. So in our case, it will be that random string. Sure. Okay. Because if we wouldn't do that, right, if you would just put um, random underscore ID dot server dot hex without the braces, it'll literally put that there as the value. Right. Okay. I get it. Now, do we need a space after the dash here? No. 
No, okay. we, we don't want a space. Because it'll okay. literally put that space there, and we don't want that in our database name. Wait. Now if I do... Nope. <laughs> no, oh. sorry. Not, not gonna tab. <laughs> not gonna fill it for me no if only right yeah i was trying my, my best to, to channel your your autocomplete yeah my my inner laziness <laughs> <laughs> i know okay cool so this should give us a database in us central one which is a, a region inside of google cloud have we covered regions before? Regions and zones? Um, so we have not on this stream. No. Okay. But regions are based on where the actual servers are hosted. Yes. Correct. Yeah. That is like the, the data center location or yeah. the, the region where that data center is located. Um, do you want to give a stab at what, what zones are? Are zones within the data center where your server lives? Uh, yes, but what is the purpose of a zone? Well, it's an identifier. Yeah, but why would we have several zones within a data center? I mean, I, I, besides making things easier to find, I don't know. So it's, it's mainly for high availability. So each zone okay. is actually segmented from the other ones in, in case of failover scenarios, right? So they have their own uh, power, own network, etc. So if one zone goes down, you still have the other zones to um, make up for that. So okay. that way, if you would... Um, so a lot of our products use a quorum of like three to five nodes, right? And I'm guessing I need to explain what a quorum is now. Well, I know, well, I know what a quorum is in terms of like the having word. enough, enough, yeah, <laughs> the, the English description of it. Yes. Uh, but in this sense, maybe you do need to describe what it is. So it is just like the, the English word is, um, basically, if you would have one server and that server would be um, the leader because it makes all the decisions, right? But if that one server goes down, you have nothing, right? Now, if you would have two servers, which of those would become the leader? If they both say, hey, I elect myself as leader, there, there is no quorum, right? Because you always get like a split brain, like both of them can, can um, elect themselves as, as leader. Right now with three, it's the minimum number of servers you need to reach a quorum because one server will elect itself or as leader, like, or propose itself, and then the others will vote, but there's never a three way tie, right? You always have like, okay, two vote for one of these servers. So you would get a leader. Does that make sense? I mean, it makes sense, but it leaves me with a lot of questions. <laughs> like what? These servers are volunteering to be leaders and then servers are holding voting sessions. <laughs> yes. That is what, what happens what? with leadership. <laughs> right, but these are inanimate objects. <laughs> well, the bytes are moving. <laughs> and then how, how you can't always, if you have three votes, I could we could each vote for ourselves so then you still have a three-way tie yeah but something in that leadership election al algorithm basically makes it so you always end up with like one of the uh, leaders that way interesting yeah so how does this this leadership how does this process kick off like how does this so get triggered Basically, in, in our products, once the um, servers are started and they notice that there is no quorum, it'll automatically uh, try to elect a leader amongst its quorum. 
Okay. Right? Now, the nice thing is with three, if one of these servers goes down, right, then um, the other two pairs will still be able to serve all that traffic, right? If the server then com comes back up, they can elect a new leader and it's all, all fine and dandy again. Um, so by putting those servers in different availability zones, you actually are able to have somewhat of a failure, right? Where one mm -hmm. zone in a data center goes down and the rest can still function. And when that zone comes back up, everything is uh, back as it was. Sure. So it, it's mostly from that point of view, um, basically helping with high availability. Okay. Is there, with the concept of leaders and followers, can we, as humans, dictate which server would be the leader in any case? Or is it always just like randomly um, generated? So I think there are ways where you can influence it. Um, but ideally, you want the service to figure it out on their own. Because if you architect it that way, when there is a failure, it'll still work without human intervention. Right? Because if the whole data center goes down and like power goes off for a little bit, power comes back on, system goes back up, all the servers start again, they'll just elect a new leader and they'll just continue working as normal. Whereas if your whole website is then down, um, and you need a human to actually kick off everything. Um, that's not really what you want. Right. Okay. I didn't know this was a thing. Yeah. Fascinating. Well, it's a really important thing because especially in applications, let's say for instance, a scheduler like Nomad, right? If you send Nomad uh, a job file that it needs to place somewhere, right? And you have three servers. Now, if there wasn't a leader, you could have three servers trying to place the same workload at the same time on different machines, right? Which is not what you want, right? Like you always want there to be one decision in these kind of things. And it's the same with storing data. So in databases, it's really important as well, because where are we gonna um, write that data? Or if there's multiple inserts happening at the same time, or an insert and a delete, like what is the actual order in which we'll process these? Um, th those kind of things are really important to have one unanimous de decision. Makes sense. So yeah, that's uh, regions and zones. <laughs> Fascinating stuff. Yeah. Um, Kareem has something to say. Yeah, so you can change um, weight and, and eligibility for uh, service and things, but normally you, you would just not mess with that too much. There's like very unique cases where you would do that. Okay. Um, so I think we should be all right if we do a Terraform plan on this. Um, but I think because we have a Git workflow, we'll actually need to commit it and push it and then go to Terraform Cloud to see it run. I am muted because my dogs are continually barking at something. Oh, that's totally fine. I know, but it's not the best thing for the stream. I don't think I don't think our viewers want to listen to my dogs bark in the background. I I don't know. I I think Kareem would. Oh, you think so? Yeah. I mean, I'd oh. rather just be hanging out with us in the background, quiet. You yawning just makes me want to grab a cup Sorry. of coffee. <laughs> I'm trying to open up. Thermos, do I still? Yes. Black gold. Oh my gosh. You still have coffee? Yeah. Well. 
Oh my goodness, I am, oh no, I need to go here. I'm like, why can't I find what I need to do? So thumbnail website, we want to commit What do we this. do with thumbnail? Oop. Cancel. Come on, Zoom. Eject. Eject. <laughs> wow, what did we do? <laughs> That's great to hear, hear Lu Lucifer. Lucifer is saying, this is better than my online classes. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, I guess. I don't know. Maybe that's not, not saying much for the classes. <laughs> uh, let's see. So line six looks like we added the object name prefix. Oh, yeah. This was um, our yeah, attempt at, the, at, at the infinite loop of, failure. Yeah, the end of last time. Um, yeah. Yes. Okay, so do that. That that's all good. Chain commit those changes. Gonna I'm going to clean up that infinite bucket we had. <laughs> um and then we're going to change the location of our doggos and cats. So they live in the images folder instead of the thumbnails folder, right? We'll we'll fix that in a second. So let me um, okay. fix I call our this database generation, database instance generation. Chase. Um, add database instance. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, that was a... Uh... Oh, no. Well, that's all I can do. Yeah, that's fine. Well, you want to keep your commit messages short so that people don't have to read a book just to know sure. what you did. <laughs> sure. I was trying to say something about our infinite loop issue, but... Okay, so we need to go over on this side of my screen. How do I clean this up again, my uh, terminal screen? Um, so you can either type clear or control L. Okay. Which does exactly the same. Um, and if you're on Windows, I think it is CLS. Clear screen. Okay. And here I want to get push, right? Uh, yes. I'm glad you like the music, Wari. I hope the music's not too loud. Uh oh. Oh no, Alexandra, why is it not working? I'll let you figure that out while I. Because uh... I'm not telling it where to go. Well. Do you remember that fancy prompt? Like, we, we pimped your terminal, right? Yes. Do you remember what it used to do in the beginning? What the fancy terminal used to do? Yeah, like the path of where you are on your machine. Yeah. Where where are you in the terminal right now? Um, just in the terminal on the blank screen, nowhere. <laughs> well, you're in the squiggly line, which is your home directory. Okay, so I need to change directory. Yes, because our code is not in your home directory. Right. Because when you clone a Git repository or create a Git repository, it actually creates hidden files on your system in that current directory. So there's a .git directory that has all the, the details of where it needs to pull the code from, push it to, um, what is the current state, etc. And since our code does not live in your home directory, um, there is no Git file. So I think it's somewhere in documents, right? I think so too. And if you just tab, yep. Tap, tab. What? Tap, tap. Tap, yep. Oh, no. Tap, enter, return. Yep, tab. Tap, tap. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. Yep, return. Return. Tab. Tab. Done. 
Return. There we go. We so go. you you see on the left, you have your full path of where you are. That's a nice and the nice thing about having a terminal like that is you can actually see where you are on your file system at all times without having to type command to figure out like, oh, what is the current directory, etc. Because if you type PWD, it will give you the current directory. PWD? Yeah. Seems like that would be password, but what is that? I, I think it gives you the path to the working directory. Wow, okay. PWD. Got it. I just have to think for a second, like, what would it be? But I think it's path working directory. See, this is a good one for the, the quiz. Okay, yeah. so now I can do a git push because we're in the correct directory. Yes, and um, another thing in your terminal, what you can see is you're on the main branch, mm -hmm. right? And you have things to push up, right? Mm -hmm. You see the little up arrow? I certainly do. So that means you have changes and then, well, yeah, it could also be print working directory. Either one of those. But it's something with working directory. All right, go ahead, Alexandra. Do salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Yeah, for ah, oh, push it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, a really good attempt. Thanks. Yeah, that's. I, I'm, I'm dating myself every stream I do. Let's leave the music to the, the background selection that you made. <laughs> Thanks. Rob asked me to sing on, on the last stream. Oh, I missed it. Told him that, that was a bad idea. How did it go? No, I didn't, because I told him it was a bad idea. And oh. you're like actively uh, pushing me from singing, so thanks. I'm, conf I'm confirming what your <laughs> assertion yesterday. <laughs> yeah. OK, so code is pushed. If you go over to Terraform Cloud, you should then see this. Oh, Alexander, what did you do? I pushed something bad. Yeah, let's... Uh... Oh, I didn't... Well, no, you need apply. to go to the run. Okay. Right, and then at the top, that one is unhealthy. Okay. So, why? Because we didn't actually plan and apply? Oh, no. It, it's an actually a valid error. So, if you look at the bottom, it says why it failed. Cloud SQL admin API has not been used in this project or is yes. disabled. Yes. So, let me enable it. Um, normally, this is another nice thing that you could do through Terraform, right? Have all those APIs in a list that you want enabled. But right now, I don't want to waste time with us finding all those URLs of the APIs we need to enable. So I'm just going to do it uh, through the console at the moment. So. Is this Cloud SQL Admin API, what command or what code do we input that is pointing to this that is like erroring out? Is it so, this resource here? Yeah, so the, in, the way it works on Google Cloud is you need to enable a feature before you can use it. It's like they have sections um inside of google cloud so if you want to do something with compute you need to enable compute if you want to use cloud run you need to enable cloud run um i think storage is by default on but sql is another one of those things where okay you need to enable it before you can use it um it's probably just a security thing where it's like oh i don't want my employees to use certain features you can then have it d disabled Okay, 
So it's because we've created this resource that points to SQL. Yeah, and it's saying like, hey, you're trying to create a database, but you haven't enabled okay. SQL admin yet. So it's enabled now. Um, okay. So let's do another run. So you don't need to do a git push or anything. In the Terraform cloud, we can actually do a rerun of this. So we could do queue manually, yep. And then queue to plan. Oop. Let's see if it works. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed. So, and, and normally this is something you would do through Terraform, um, but the API enabled things are URLs and you need to look them up and you need to enable like a whole list of things by default. Otherwise it'll disable the things you had manually clicked, for instance. Okay. So don't want to go through that now, <laughs> just to save time. That's why I did it through the uh, Google Cloud UI. All right, so it seems like the plan was clean. That's nice. It's applying it. So it's creating our database instance. So that's cool. Right? That is cool. Sorry, I'm reading these, these reading the messages on my laptop. Okay, so let me actually um, put this over you. So you're going to disappear for a second. Let me transition to this view. So if you look, we can see that it's generating a database, right? And then here is our random hash, right? Okay, so you call that random string of numbers and letters a hash. Yes. Where does that come from? I don't know, cryptographers came up with that term. I didn't I didn't come up with it. Okay. Can't blame me for, for that one. Okay. Right? I'll take it off the list of things to blame me for. Good, because that list was getting long. <laughs> it is long, you're <laughs> correct. <laughs> okay, so that is creating. Um, oh, let me put this tab back in, uh, in here so I can actually see things and make that tiny bit smaller because it was pretty huge. Let's put Alexander back on screen as well. Okay, so while that is running, it's now creating that instance. Um, but once we have that, there's another thing we're gonna need and that is a database inside of that, right? A database inside of our database. Well, no, we have our database instance, which is like the, the machine where the databases are running on, right? Where Postgres engine is running. And then inside of this Postgres instance, we can create multiple databases. And each of those databases can have tables and in uh, rows, etc. Okay. So let's take a look at the Terraform registry and the documentation and already get started on that database. Cause this always takes a while spinning up databases, etc. So we have our instance. Yep. And we want our database. There we go. So again, because we're just doing the most simple version of this, we can basically take the example, but I'll let you figure out which bits of the example we need. All right, I'm gonna grab it all and then we can edit it in VS Code, yes? No. No? <laughs> yeah, you can. That's fine. <laughs> do I want to create a new resource or do we create this within the database? I would put it in the same file because it's all grouped together as... So file. there is no... Um, what word do I want to use for it? There's no specific rule of what you should put in one file. Mm -hmm. um, it's your personal preference or the preference of your organization or team um, to structure it logically. But the more logically you structure things, the easier it is to grow your code and to refactor code, etc. Sure. 
that makes sense to me. Okay, so the resources, Google SQL database. So we need to give this resource, this database a name. Yep, so we could call this website, I think is a nice name for, for this one. Right, so, so this would be the database for our website. So we want to change it here as well as name? Yes. And then how do I highlight multiple again? Control D or Command D. I don't remember on a Mac what it was. Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try Command D. There we go. Website. So do we want it to be my website? Uh, I mean, you're asking the question, so probably not. <laughs> well, it's your personal choice what you want to call it. I would just call it website, but that's just me. Okay. You call it dog website. Are, are there any other websites? That's also not very in inclusive. Like, are we going to leave out Nori's picture? Nori's kind of like a, she's kind of like a dogish cat. She counts. Well, I know he's neutered, but he's not a oh, she yet. <laughs> That's true. Sorry. Nori. <laughs> Nori's a male. Okay. So what else do we, uh, need to fix here. Do we need this resource here? Do you think we need that resource? Well, we've got it up here. Yep. But this looks a little bit different. So it's got the database version. That's not down here. So do we need to update this? I don't know. I so don't know the answer. <laughs> we don't need that because in the example, if you want to create a database, you need a database instance. So that's why in the example, it had an instance included in that example, but we already have our own instance, so we don't need it. Do we need this deletion protection? No, because if you look at the indentation, it's all part of the same resource. Now, a nice way to check that is if you click on the upper mustache of resource. Shows you the closing one. Yes. So you know exactly up to where you need to get rid of it. Okay. All right, especially when you have really long resources it's it's nice to be able to see like okay this is where it opens scroll down where does it end okay okay, okay. so what do you think are we done again because you're asking probably the answer is no well i'm also going to be asking if when we are oh you are well yeah i need to have you think a bit for yourself it's not Monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> <laughs> kind of is. <laughs> um, okay, so we are creating the database within our instance. Are we done here in VS Code? Are we ready to commit is the question. Yeah. So the name of our instance, right? This is referencing back to that resource. Yes. So we need to change the instance name to be yes. a database. Correct. Um, so I want to do data yeah. base and get rid of the rest of this. No. No? No, because... So, okay, dot name this one here. Yeah, because dot name ref refers to the name field inside of database. So basically, line 23 points at line 2. Okay. Right? Yep. It's the, the path of that field. Correct. So um, 
And then, like the, if you were going to say, yes, I think we're done, I was going to have you do a Terraform validate. And it would have told you that we would have gotten a reference that doesn't exist. So you might want to do a Terraform validate just to show people that might not be familiar with it. Okay. Um, I don't remember the, the validate command. Terraform validate? That's, 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 that's Literally. <laughs> All right. Could not load plugin. Oh. So Let's run Terraform in it. Yep. Now, why did this happen? I'm not sure why it lost the uh, local state, but it's recreated it now. So that's fine. Okay. Let's try this again. Terraform validate. The configuration is valid. Cool. And do you want to uh, use your favorite Terraform command? Terraform fumped. Yeah, Terraform fumped. So that will format all of our code. So it's all nice and um, same indented, right? Okay. So let's add this code. Why did the, th the thumbnail change again? Oh, you're because you're doing that on your side, right? Um, no, I didn't do that. Oh, it's because of Terraform, Terraform Fumpt. Oh, okay. Because it, it. it actually changes the indentation. Um, okay. But as you can see, it only added spaces. Yep. So it won't actually impact our Terraform run. It, it won't force it to create any new resources. Okay. So here we are adding a database. Yes. Yes. So I'm curious if anybody is in chat, like we're working on GCP with Terraform now. Are there any resources you would like me and Alexandra to explore next? So we've been working with um, Google storage buckets. We've been working with PubSub a little bit. Um, we've created notifications that publish things uh, when we upload something to our bucket and that then gets transmitted into PubSub. And we have used Google Cloud Run to resize images. Um, and we're now adding Google Cloud SQL. Are there any other resources you would like us to explore maybe that you have tried yourself or things like that. Well, Kareem, why are you asking questions that you can answer yourself? <laughs> what did he say? File? Yeah. What is the terraform.log.hcl file? So oh. you might want to check that file out. That's um, a fairly recent thing. So we are using providers, right, to do things for us. And these providers all have versions. Now, if you would have um, a team that you work together with, then this is the way to make sure that you all have the same versions of those providers, right? So these are the actual um, versions in a list um, that it locks. So if if people in chat are maybe familiar with JavaScript, JavaScript has like a package.json file. This is very similar to that where you define your dependencies and what the actual version is. Um, or actually the yarn lock file is probably more um, a, a better description of this. And if you're used to Golang, this is basically your your mod file, right? Where it has that uh, 
the, the, the actual hash of the installed package that you're using. So it, it's not impacting you in any way right now, Alexandra. Okay. But I think Kareem just wanted to highlight it. Yeah, it's a good question. It's good. Thank you for raising it. And maybe at some point I'll retain <laughs> when this is relevant to what we're doing. Then I'll, I'll know. This is one of the things that Kareem can nicely highlight in his uh, YouTube series, Plan and Apply. Oh, when is that YouTube series kicking off? You're asking Kareem, right? Yeah, Kareem. <laughs> Kareem in the chat. Noted. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> Okay, so, so, so sometime in so, sometime future, future Kareem will be doing that. Yes, I'm excited for that one. Cool. Maybe I'll uh, I'll be able to follow along and I'll well, have I think, a better understanding of what he's doing. Like it it'll be somewhat like we have been doing, but a bit more structured. <laughs> yeah, it'll be uh, videos, right? That yes. So you can go back videos. and look, and it'll be really nice. As opposed to live streams where we fumble through half of the yes the time. We're more of a fumbling kind of people. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite the combination. So have we pushed this new change to Terraform Cloud? We certainly have. Okay. I'm curious, did that actually create our database then? Please go away, Zoom. It finished, so what does it look like? So... I actually see the database, which is exciting. Let me uh, zoom in slightly and put that up on the stream. So as you can see, we have the default Postgres database that any Postgres um, database has automatically, or Postgres instance, I should say. And then we have here our website. So that's all good. We actually created our initial database. We now need to create a default admin user for our database and generate a random database password for that user. Pretty cool. Yes. So if we scroll further down, yeah, right? See the so in this example, and it's actually um, something we did, right? You see that they are actually generating a random ID for their database as well. I don't know if you've noticed. For their database. For their instance, just like we did to work around that issue where um, if you delete a database, you cannot recreate it with that same name. Okay. Yep, I see that. So um, let's do the exact uh, same thing they are doing where they are creating a user. Okay, and we want to create an SQL user, not a Cloud IM user. Yes. All right, so I'm going to grab this whole thing. Do we Do we need the whole thing? Well, so we already have this, right? Yeah. In the database. Yep. Um, here. I have too many spaces. I don't like it. Same. I would just put one. Um. Okay. So we've got that. Yeah. We also have this resource, which is the Google SQL database. That's up here. Yep. So we just need to grab this. Correct. Okay. And in our case, we want to create an admin user. Oh, good. You're already updating all the references. Nice. At least one of them. 
yeah, well, that's the only reference we needed to update. So um, let's change the um, label because I think users for adding just one user is a bit strange. Yeah, I like that. Um, maybe you also want to change the name to admin then. Yep. Um, host, let's remove that one. Although we might need to add a host. Let me uh, quickly go to the documentation myself. Right, so if we take a look at host, it's optional. Um, and it's only supported by MySQL instances. So that means... We're not using it. Nope. Because we are... What is it, vanilla or chocolate? Which one chocolate. Did you? Or chocolate. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we are doing Postgres I, instead of um, MySQL. I do prefer chocolate ice cream over vanilla ice cream. Yeah. Well, both is obviously better. Yeah. I'd rather mix chocolate and coffee ice cream than chocolate and vanilla ice cream. Ooh. Do you... um? So, off topic. Well, currently on topic. <laughs> In the US... Mm -hmm. Do you have a type of ice cream where it's brandy soaked, um, what do you call them? Sultanas, uh, raisins in ice cream? Um, that is a question for the chat because I have not heard of that, but that doesn't mean that we, someone somewhere in the United States doesn't make that ice cream. Okay. But is that like a like a national thing in the I, Netherlands? I, I don't know. Popular? That that's what I'm kind of wondering. But it is. Or is that like delicious. an idea that you have? No, it's delicious. So is it vanilla ice cream with brandy soaked raisins in it? Yes. So they're like swirled through. Okay. Yeah, I'm curious if anyone has heard of that. Um, we do have a lot of like ice creams that have that type of concept but i've not heard of brandy soaked raisins and not a big fan of raisins to start with so all right well yeah are you a fan of brandy mm, it wouldn't be my first choice all right well i think you can also have rum soaked ones but what about margarita soaked ones Oof, i don't <laughs> we'd have to soak something other than raisins if you're gonna use margarita <sighs> Like a margarita ice cream would be delicious. Yeah, but what would you soak in? I guess you would just have, maybe you have like a lime, a lime ice cream with margarita mixed in. <laughs> with like a floater of tequila. <laughs> so it's basically, what you're suggesting is a glass of tequila with a <laughs> scoop of ice cream floating in it. I actually have a better idea. So lime ice cream with like, do you know how they do salted caramel? Yeah. Right, salted lime ice cream. <laughs> that would be good. I think that would be delicious. Yeah, no, I've had a beer um, that basically was brewed with uh, lime and sea salt and it was delicious. Yeah, I mean, if you do sea salt well, it is quite the flavor enhancer. Yes. So this there is definitely such thing as too much. In salt, something yeah, obviously. <laughs> but if you can do it just right, that's yeah. an interesting, interesting thought of a combination. Hmm. Yeah. I might have to go to my local creamery over here and tell them to try to make that this summer. Creamery? Yes. K-R-E-M-E. -E oh, so not K-E-R-I-M. No, but cream, creamery. <laughs> no, I was just referring to Kareem in chat. I know, I know, I am as well. But his oh. nickname is K R E M E, like Krispy Kremes. Oh yeah, true. All right, fair enough. Okay, well, what well, we did gone gone on quite the tangent. Yeah, where were we? So we need to generate a password. So I'd like you to take a look at the random provider again. 
Okay. Because besides being able to generate um, numbers and uh, strings for us, well, there you go. It can also generate a random password. Yeah. Or PWD. No, no, no. That's <laughs> either print or path working directory. And the more I think about it, it's probably print working directory. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's grab that random password and use that. So I'm going to leave it to you again to decide which bit of the example we need, because you're getting better at it. There's a, there's a couple of things in here, right? This allocated storage and engine. We don't have those yet. Yeah, but we also don't need an AWS database instance since we're on Google Cloud. So would we have these bits in Google Cloud Storage? No, because all the fields of a resource are unique to that resource. Right? So that it doesn't mean that because a database in AWS has these fields, the one in GCP would have the same. Okay. Um, so you need to go to the actual resource in the registry and look like, okay, which fields can I use? What fields can I use and what fields are required? Yes, exactly. Okay. So yeah, because you remember of... that um, horizontal ruler where you were wondering like, hey, why is that field above the horizontal ruler and the other one below? That was the required fields and then optional yes. fields below that. Okay. So in this Ooh, case for... I nearly put lemonade in my coffee. It's an odd combo. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in the case of AWS, it's either required or optional to specify the allocated storage and engine, whereas for GCP, it's not required at least. No, it just has different fields entirely. Okay. It's like saying, basically you're, you're saying, um, the resource car and the resource bicycle, right? They both have a steering wheel, so both have those, but a, a bicycle does not have an engine. So you're not specifying that because it's just not an, a field on it. It's not optional. So are we saying that GCP is a bicycle and AWS is a car? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Anyways, I think I've copied what we need since we already have this resource for our instance. Yes, correct. Even though it looks a little bit different, it's up here. Yes. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at that password. Um, length of 16 is fine. Could, could be longer, maybe, but um, 16 will be okay. Um, we want to have special characters, right? Mm -hmm. And since it's an SQL password and it'll be used in connection strings, there are some characters we want to replace just so it doesn't mess up any logic, right? So the at symbol is always a good one to replace, the percentage one, um, the underscore, uh, I don't think there are any other ones that would interfere in our case, so this is probably a good one. But you can override those characters, basically saying, hey, if it's one of these, put something else in there. Don't don't use it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now we need to use that password, right? Mm -hmm. You need to change to change me. I'm sorry? Sorry, sipping. You need to change the change me. I need to change the change me. You, you had change me highlighted on your screen. Oh, you're right there. The password itself. Okay. Yes, correct. <laughs> I'm like looking over here in our files. Like, where's the, where's the change me? <laughs> That's fine. Um, okay. So the password needs to equal 
this password random password dot password yes so do you remember um when i told you about strings and being literal versus being interpreted mm -hmm. so right now you're creating a literal string of random password dot password that is what your password will be okay which is not very random okay right so do we need the um so you want to remove the quotes in this case okay so not a string yes because the output will guy? actually no we don't need that because you only need the dollar mustaches if you want to do interpolation within a string Right? Like if you want to replace a bit inside of the string with logic. Okay. Okay. So what you've now done is you're returning the actual resource, right? But we want a specific value from that resource. And the example actually has this already for you. Because they're doing something similar for their database instance. So over here. Result, password dot result. Yes, correct. So it's the resulting uh, password once it's generated. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that looks good. Um, what we might want to do though is it'll generate a password for us now. It'll set it on that user, but we'll have no idea what that password will be. Correct. So maybe we want to output it. Do you remember when we output something else before? Not that it helped us a whole lot because it was basically outputting the wrong thing, but do you remember when we did that? Um, for the image URLs? Yeah. Right here. Line 51 or 32, any of these? Yes. <clears throat> so do we want to copy this over then? Yeah, yeah, we, that's a good starting point. We are going to output a string, right? Um, so this is the name of the output. So would we want to be as specific as password? Yeah, or da database password or something, or admin password, or... Oh, I like admin password. Like once we have it in the output, it needs to be something that we can actually use <laughs> like know and find right 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 so and then we need to change the value obviously because we don't want it to be set to the link to the image right so we'd want to be google sql user dot admin followed by more things no so we can the the field that we're using inside of the uh, google sql user we can actually do the same for our, our output. Or um, if you can go to the documentation for the SQL user. And scroll down to the attributes. Uh, scroll up to the fields. Oh, that's all it is. Yep, let's scroll, oh, scroll up. To the argument reference is where I want to go. Oh, you said attributes. Sorry. So we can actually use that field, right? So we could do kind of what you were saying, where we use the Google SQL user and then grab the password, password field of that resource. 
So if you think of it as a, a path to the password field, right, which is on line, um, if you click the editor, I can see the line numbers. So basically we want to point at line 27. Right. Is that all we need is just this? Well, you could use that, but instead of pointing at that, let's point at the field that is being created at line 27 instead of the value. So the word password on the left of, let's point at that. Okay. So I'm getting rid of all of this. Yes. That is correct. Now, obviously just password is not going to be enough because it doesn't know where that field is, right? So we need to go up, up to the chain, up the hierarchy. So we need the instance. Yes. So would it be just instance? No. So you're thinking of it um, in the wrong way. We need okay. to do Google Cloud SQL user dot admin dot password. That's the hierarchy. The field is inside of the admin instance of the Google SQL users. Does that make sense? Um, it does. Right? Because now that is pointing at the field in line 27 field within the resource yes okay See, so this it'll... is what i was trying to start with i know okay but you want to go backwards well no i was thinking of a different solution first um and then i thought like okay maybe it is nicer to point at that so sorry for tr to throw you off okay okay so Maybe do a validate to make sure that we got all the references right. Um, maybe do a, a fumpt to make sure that we have everything okay. nicely indented, etc. Let me grab some more lemonade. Lemonade sounds delicious. Okay, so our configuration is valid. Yay, step one, we're nearly there. <laughs> like Fumped was not necessary. Okay, so everything was already nicely indented. And that's mostly because we copied the example of, of the registry, which is also formatted with the same command. Sure, that makes sense. All right, so we can commit this and push it. Okay, so this is... Word output. Is that cool? Um, I would just say add user and password, and then the output is just part of that. Okay, so let's take a look if, if that's all going to plan. Gosh, Zoom. <laughs> the, big, the big screen share bar keeps getting in the way. Yeah, I wish they would find something to make that less annoying. Yeah. Okay, it's, so it is plan looks good. Cool. The apply is running. Oh, hey, there we go. Yeah. Apply complete. Yep. And there you have your random generated password for your yep. admin user. Cool. So I think we, 
we didn't get all the way where we wanted this week, but I think this is a nice point to actually pause, right? So we created the database, the or sorry, database instance, the database, the user, and we generated a password for it. Basically, the database is ready for us to start using. Cool. Then the next time we can create our Cloud Run application and connect to that database. Okay. Yeah, I think that you're right that this is a a good place to, to pause. I guess maybe we didn't get as far as we wanted to, but I feel like we had some more in-depth discussion around everything we were doing, which is helpful. Yeah, and I think we needed that little refresher for, for you to get back in the mindset of, of what we were trying to achieve and what we did before. Um, and I really like that idea that, that Lucifer put up where we do a little Twitch quiz at the start. I would agree. Um, and then I think the way we should do it is I'll put up the poll in, uh, in Twitch chat, right? Then I ask you the question as well, and you're not looking at the results of the Twitch chat. Yep. Mm -hmm. You give the answer, and then we reveal what Twitch chat thought the answer was. I think that's a good idea. That'll be a, a nice gauge if, to, to see if, if we explain things well. And yeah, we could do Slido as well, but I kind of like uh, just putting it inside of Twitch. Is that actually a functionality of Twitch? A Twitch yeah. Poll? Okay. So cool. we can play around with that. I, I think that'll be really fun to do. Uh, do some uh, quizzing there. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's good to do that. Right. And the idea of it being so from a learning perspective for myself, the idea of it being multiple choice as opposed to a free form like question with no options yeah helps to jog my own memory i know that yes um and i still have to kind of think through what those options are but it gets me back in the mindset of like understanding what the answer is but also understanding why it's not other answers yeah and like at least you'll see some terms that might trigger you and like, oh yeah, I remember doing something with exactly. that. Exactly. So I think that will be important. Um, I'll try and clean up that diagram a little bit as well. So we mm -hmm. can actually like catalog our journey a bit better. Cool. Um, that'll probably help as well. Awesome. I like that. Yeah. And if anybody in, in chat has any, um, oh yeah, let me switch back to uh, our little, yay. Yeah, we're here together now. Yeah. I'm I'm in a more tropical place than you, but You definitely are. Yes. It's, it's quite cool here today after it's been warm for a few days, so You can always uh, get a green screen and be wherever you want to be. I could. <laughs> um but I I think it'll be nice to um have that diagram and oh yeah, I was going to ask like if anybody in chat has ideas for other components that you would like us to explain and use and explore, um, let us know, because we, we'd love to tailor these sessions, um, even though it's basically me teaching Alexandra how to learn or how to use Terraform, um, it would be cool if it also applied to everybody watching. So um, if you have any ideas, um, ping me on Twitter, uh, that would be at Eric Veld. Let me just put that in. Probably Twitch is gonna replace that with, I'll just do it like that. There we go. Um, if there's any subjects you would like me to cover, please put that in there. Cause then we can make it a bit more relevant to whoever is watching. Um, yeah. And this is, uh, is all new to me, like completely new. So trying anything related to Terraform is going to be, I think, fun. And I mean, it'll be a learning experience and it will, it'll will it be interesting. Yes. Right? There's there's nothing that I'm old hat at that I wouldn't want to, to try with Terraform. Oh my God, Frank looks so comfortable. Yep. He's mostly bored and he's upset with me that I'm 
not taking him outside, but <laughs> he does get cozy very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just He's so I don't cute. know. He's adorable. Yeah, Frank, we're looking at you. He's ignoring us. Yeah. Frank's not having it today. No, nope, he's not. <laughs> All right. Well, to close off, do you maybe want to do a quick recap what we did today? Just to jog your memory, to make sure that something stuck? Yeah, so today I, I'm super excited. So my partner, Tim, is a database engineer. So a lot of this stuff that we talk about is he and I talk about like in our personal life. Um, just when he tells me like what he's doing for work and he works for um, a, a DNA, like a data sequencing company right now. Um, and so he's building databases and moving data around all the time. Um, so from my perspective to create my first database is pretty cool <laughs> since I hear him talk about it all the time. And now you're know. like, oh yeah, I've done that today. <laughs> Yeah, I can't like I can't wait to tell him I did it. And I created and we created an admin user uh, and randomly generated a password. But I also learned what hashes are. Yeah. Um, and how to create that random hash ID. Um, so it was all really fun stuff. Like I can actually have a conversation about this with him after. after yeah. Work today. I'm now thinking like we should definitely implement Vault into our stack so you could one up him and be like oh yeah so do you also like have short-lived passwords and render it and generate them on the fly for your users for every re yeah. request yeah let's right. do it uh, just to one up him yeah <laughs> all right that'll be in a future one then yeah that'll be a, a few <laughs> that'll be a few weeks from now yeah Maybe like that'll... on a tuesday <laughs> yeah pep cac monday yeah maybe all right. Well, thanks everybody for, for joining us. Wari, Lucifer, Kareem, of course, always here. Yeah. Thank you, Kareem. Thank you everybody else. And thank you, Kareem, for always being in the chat with us. Yes. So with that, um, hope to see you all next time. And again, if there's anything you want us to cover. Yeah, go ahead, Alexandra. I was going to say, do we need to talk about when next time is? Oh, because next time is not next week, is it? Well, mm. do we want to do next week on a Thursday? Are you cool with a Thursday? What about a Wednesday? Oh, well, let me look. I'm, I'm going in my calendar now. I can do Wednesday. Actually, can't, I can't do Thursday. That's why. I oh, that's fine. Wednesday. We can do Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, so yeah, next week we will do Wednesday the 24th. Okay. Same time, different I... day. Yep. So let me just, uh, Wednesday 24th, 1300 CET. What is that in Eastern? Eastern time for the next week, the next week-ish is 8 a.m. So is that next week as well? Correct. So 800 or late 8 colon 100 EST. There we go. So hope to see you all then. Um, looking forward to it. Me too. Well, oh, have a nice day, everyone. Bye.
Thank you.